Many studies look at a paired difference between two dependent samples, investigating systems where there are measurements taken, say, before and after. There's usually an experimental treatment or process between the two measurements. There may be other things that link the two paired items as well. We'll look at some examples in this particular section, but you can certainly uh, read through the text that will be linked below. This is a type of test between two samples where we don't have a known population mean as we did in the previous chapter. In the previous chapter, we had a known or expected or predicted population mean, and uh, we could run a test to see if a sample could come from that population. The sample mean uh, supports that possible population mean. Here in chapter 11, we're looking at two possible cases. Case one is the null hypothesis. The two samples do come from the same population and there's no difference. Case one is a failure to reject the null hypothesis. And case two can be seen here the two samples don't come from the same population. What this will mean is that there is a significant difference between the two sample means. So we're looking for difference between two samples, and we don't know anything about the population. A couple of the examples are run. One is paired marbles. I have marbles here that are visually identical. Uh, ten pairs of marbles, orange, blue, green. You can see them. They look almost identical. But in an earlier section, we found that they have different weights. So they actually have slightly different sizes. I ran a test to see if I could visually determine which two are larger. You might try to decide that yourself. Which of those two marbles appears to be larger to you? Which of those two is larger? So the pair is the two marbles. There's a left marble and a right marble. They're identical in their color, and, and uh, so they came from the same batch, if you will, or likely to have come from the same batch of marbles, um, but they aren't exactly the same uh, mass, and so they're not exactly the same size. But can you tell that visually? So, which one is larger? I then picked out the uh, which ones I thought were larger, and then measured them with a micrograph. You can see here, I haven't measured them yet, and I've used dice to mark which one I thought was larger. Just visually thought which one was larger. And then using this tool here, the micrometer, uh, it's not micrograph, micrometer, I was able to measure all of the marbles, and it turned out that uh, visually it's really difficult to tell which one is larger. I was right only 40% of the time. <laughs> but that was the paired test between the two. I also looked at a leaf. In the foreground, you'll see a leaf that's tilted because of shade coming from the building on the left. A leaves at the phototropism is a tendency of leaves to turn towards the light. I had noticed in an earlier measurement that this appeared to make the leaflets have different lengths on the two sides of the leaf, the leaflets left and right. There seemed to be a pattern, and so I was curious whether the upside or the downside had a longer leaflet. So I looked at that data as well uh, in the spreadsheet. And a third example uh, I took from class, and I'll explain that when we come to it. So here's the marble data. I had the marble I thought was smaller and the marble I thought was larger, and then after I made that decision, I measured the marbles, and you can see the results here. And any time you have a negative number, I got it wrong. You see, what I've got in column C here is that I have measured the difference between the larger and the smaller. So. Here in C3, it's just B3 minus A3. That's what's happening up here. And that's filled down. But the mean difference is positive. Uh, despite my losing ratio, I was only getting about four of them correct, uh, there is a small difference. The larger marbles exceed the smaller by an average of 0 0.0007 inches. These are measurements in inches. I always choose my alpha first. 0.05, as we do in this course, we use 0.05, and a new function to calculate the p-value, because here I can't make the t-statistic because I need a population mean, and I don't know the population mean size of the marbles. So I'm only looking to see if there's a difference between the two samples. 
This function is called the t-test function. It starts off with two t's. Um, oh, two t's. And you can see it right there. Range 1, I give it the actual raw data range. This range up here. And I need to move this up so I can fill down. And then a comma. Range 2. Comma. Now I'm going to tell it how many tails. Two tails in this course. We use two tails. That way our results agree with what we would have gotten from confidence interval uh, testing. And finally, type 1. For a paired t-test, where you have before and after, or in this case, paired marbles, the type is 1. There are three types. Uh, we'll tackle the other two types in a future lesson. But today we're just doing type 1, which is a paired t-test. If you're not sure of something, you can always uh, look things up in the help file. There's my p-value. A quick, uh, quick look at If you did need to find out how to do something, you can tap on, tap on that bubble, and it will tell you some of the details, and type specifies the type of the test. It doesn't, in this particular short version, tell you the full details, but if you click at the bottom, you can get more details. And down here is the type specified. So there's a lot of help available to you when you're working online. So we've got here the, uh, whoop, put that away, the help file, put that in. 0.876. This is larger than 0.05. I am not surprised. I failed to reject the null hypothesis. I did not successfully detect a difference. Second example comes from the tilted center a lot of leaflet pairs. I had thought the ones that are up would be larger, so I've put them in column F. And here you can see I've run the same t-test function t-test from E3 to E12. The order of the columns doesn't matter for the t-test. I'm doing two tails. I'm doing type 1 paired because the leaflets all come in pairs. That, the leaflets are all paired. You can see that here. Each pair, left, right, left, right, left, right, is a pair. That's what I was looking at, whether one side is on average larger than the other side. Indeed, there's a small difference of 0.1. But that's 0.1 uh, uh, centimeters. That's a 1 millimeter average difference. So it's not very large. And indeed, the p-value is larger than 0.05. So again, I failed to reject. There's no difference between the leaflets that are on the upside of a tilted leaf and the downside of a tilted leaf on a senna leaf. That whole unit is one leaf that we saw. And the little... Leaves are actually technically leaflets, and that's why I used the word leaflet here. So again, I thought there was a difference, but I can scientifically show that there is no difference here, that that's just an illusion of the mind. Minds, the mind sometimes sees patterns where none exist. We have a brain designed to detect patterns, but sometimes we are detecting something that's not really there. And finally... This one is an example from my uh, class from uh, spring 2020. The students first measured the resting heart rate. You can do that. Sit down quietly and take your pulse for 60 seconds and get your resting heart rate. Those are here in column A. And the post-exercise heart rate. The students went out, tossed around some Frisbees, had a little fun on the front lawn, then came in and measured their, their post-exercise heart rate. And I'll go ahead and rerun this one. Uh, equals. So you can see how we can enter it. T-test. Just tap up there. The order of the columns doesn't matter. All I need to do is select. And I'll come down and select those. Comma. And I can... It doesn't matter if I go up or down. I can go the other direction. That works just as well. Couple tails, always two tails, and one. Uh, again, in this course, two tails, you may later be in situations where someone tells you there's a reason you have to use a one tail test, but they're pretty rare. And if you can't get significance on the two tail test, there are some real risks to running to a one tail test to try to suddenly obtain that significance. Well, at point zero zero zero, 
It doesn't matter. All that matters is it's surprising. We'll later tackle something called effect size. That it's surprising doesn't tell us how, how large the effect is, whether this is really a big difference or a small difference. But the mean difference is 23 beats per minute between the post-exercise and resting heart rates. And the p-value is far less than 0.05, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis. We have case 2 here, as in the textbook. We reject the null hypothesis. We say there is a difference between the post-exercise and the resting heart rate. Note, we don't have any idea what the population mean heart rate should be for the two samples. This just tells us that the two sample means are statistically significantly different. In the words of statistics, we would say that these two heart rates, the post-exercise and the resting heart rate, come from different populations. It's a statistical concept. It's the same person, uh, but their heart rates are significantly affected by exercise. And so that's uh, pretty obvious, but your heart rate goes up when you exercise. As we're, you can see here, some heart rates going up quite a bit. And in fact, for some, those heart rates may be a little high for just a, a game of frisbee on the front lawn. But it does give us a p-value that is statistically significant that is less than our alpha. And again, we've used an alpha of 0.05. So if you have paired data, and one has to be careful that the data is actually paired data, often a before and after test, as in education, they'll use before and after tests. They'll give a pretest, deliver some curriculum or material, and then give a post-test, and you look for a uh, increase from pre to post. In that, each row will be a student, just like these heart rate ones. You'll have a student in each row, and that'll be one student there. This, this could be one, one student. Uh, score before, score after. And you're looking to see if you have a statistically significant increase as a result of the curriculum, uh, as long as other factors were controlled. This is done in a number of studies. There's a lot of studies that work this way. There's studies on meditation, where they take a group through some, teach them to meditate, and then measure their responses to anxiety-inducing events afterward and look to see if it's had a different impact on various uh, medical metrics. So it's a, a common tool in the world of research. So that's paired t-tests and looking for a difference. We call these dependent samples because they are connected as pairs, and we're looking at whether the average difference is statistically significant.